That's, it's one of our last couple of days here in Antigua, which is pretty exciting because I think we're all quite ready to, to move on. Antigua has been a really good spot for us to, to stop. We did a little Delos meetup on the beach the other night and there was like 40 people or something that showed up just on last minute notice and it was so cool to meet everyone. Everyone's just so like-minded and and genuinely excited for life and <laughs> it's a good group of people to be around. Our patron flies in tomorrow and his name is Martin and I don't really know anything about him but I'm excited to meet him and excited to kind of show him the ways of Delos. Action! All right, welcome to the Come Sail the Caribbean Man Meet Delos in Antigua first crew competition of 2019. I have the Madagascar reusable shopping bag with our names in it. We had 65 people in total say that they could join us. So the way we do the drawing is you get one entry for every video that you've supported for us. And there are some people that supported more than one video. And so, the odds are pretty good. How'd you like to pick out a name and hand it to me? And then we'll see who's going to come sail with us. Drum roll, please. Drum roll. Take it, take it. And the winner is Martin Smith from Durango, Colorado. Cool. All right, Martin, let's try and get a hold of you and uh, make some plans. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> Hello. Hey, is this Martin? It is. Oh, good. Hello, man. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Hi. How, how was today? Today was a good day. It's yeah. Sunday fun day here, so we got off the computers and did like, you know, boat stuff and hanging out. We're going to go watch the sunset. It's almost five here. Excited. How about you, man? Like, <laughs> what are you up to? Yeah, not not too um, much. Well, you you entered the crew competition. I'm happy to say that yesterday we did a drawing, and we picked your name out of the Magic Madagascar bag, and so you're <laughs> gonna come to meet us in Antigua. We're gonna sail wow. in the warm tropical waters around here, and where are we gonna end yeah. up? Saint Martin. How how mm. fitting is that, Martin? We're gonna sail to Saint Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say other than I guess it is meant to be. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, that that sounds like a rad, um, rad, rad idea, and I would cool. love to. I'd be honored. Cool, man. Awesome. What do you got there, senior amigo? I'm gonna eat my breakfast, and then a couple of two turtles and a dinghy floating by. It's a little dinghy. Yeah, there's a turtle next to it. Whoa, two turtles and a random dinghy. So the wind's coming from that way. Gotta be from a boat right up there. Always tie your dinghy on good, kids. Does it have a name in it? It says Dream Yacht Charter, but it's gotta be this cat here. <laughs> you wanna go take it to him? Dream Look at Yacht. This terrible line. Dream Yacht Charters, why are you putting a shitty line that doesn't tie properly on your dinghy? These things slip. Never use a poly line like that, it slips. Or at least put a carabiner on it. Mm -hmm. That was classic. We were like over there like, hello, hello, like knocking on the hole and stuff. And then finally this dude came up in his underwear. He's like, <laughs> we're like, uh, I think we have your dinghy. He's like, oh, shit. What a night last night. <laughs> just starts cracking up. I was like, when did you get back? Because it was just now drifting past. I fell, I fell in the water when I got home. <laughs> it was wasted. Oh, yeah, I think he, I think he maybe just got home or something, oh. Oh. and then tried to tie the dinghy up, and it didn't work. We get to meet Martin and Crystal today. Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you. How's it going, Brady? Nice to meet you, man. So yeah, we'll, we'll get your passports. 
and uh, then we'll run on down to Customs and Immigration to check out of the country so that we're legally like free and clear and then we can pretty much just make plans from there. How did it go, Brian? You can hold on to it for a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> It looked pretty good. Uh, it's super easy here, except I used uh, the C Clear system, and there's apparently another system called E C Clear, and you're not to use C Clear because you must use E C in Antigua. But I learned that, and then she forgot to give me the passports, and then when I went back to get the passports, I was scolded for wondering what the hell I was doing here, and then I told her, "Well, you still have my passports back there," and then she apologized. But we're all set. Nice. Ready to sail. But before setting sail, we wanted to show Martin and Crystal a little bit of the scene we'd come to love so much here in Antigua. Oh, and so the idea is to avoid paying the fee at the top, because if you go up the normal route, they try and charge you 25 EC per person just to get into the place. We're not going to let that happen. So we, we <laughs> walk up the hill here, uh, and then it's free. Awesome. Okay, Dad. The underground. <laughs> Surely look out. But, trail. Back but door. Brian, back it's door. also it's also because it's a beautiful walk. Oh yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> I love it. Good exercise. Good exercise. It's more, it's more so what have you guys heard about Shirley's Heights? You said you kind of already heard of it? Um they always said come big party. Big <laughs> You come big party. <laughs> okay. Wait, I have a question. Have you ever seen a steel pan band play live? No. <laughs> <laughs> This is Mr. Abs. We call him that because he likes to strip half naked and dance with all the ladies after they've had a few too many rump punches. Of course, there's the delicious barbecue. But the real treat for me is the sunset, where there's an orgy of selfies and sunset pictures like nowhere else on the planet. sailing and we've actually chosen a different destination than we originally talked about so instead of going that way to Barbuda we're going to go that way to that little line of an island you can see right there Montserrat uh, it's a pretty cool place there's a volcano that erupted there and there's a town called Plymouth that used to be the capital that got buried in an ash flow and Brady's been arranging for us to go take a tour of that yes, uh, yes. So that's cool. It's going to be a pretty good sail downwind, about 30 miles. Let's see, it's 8.20 right now. So hopefully we can leave within the next 30 minutes. If it takes us five hours, that'll put us in there about, what, 2 p.m., which gives us just enough time to check in so that we can then do our exploring and stuff tomorrow. Alright, here we go. Yeah, there's your morning workout. There you go. Hold on. Hold on. Give me it. Antigua. It was such a cozy little island for us. We got married there. We had our little month-long honeymoon there. Alright, so it's day one of the honeymoon. Kazatron has decided to go on a cleaning mission. It's an awesome stop. I feel like I'm ready after taking it slow for 
what, almost three months. I feel like now is a good time to start sailing and moving on. And I'm really excited about uh, exploring Montserrat and getting to the BVIs. I'm really looking forward to it. It's like a little mid-season break and now I feel all charged up to start sailing again. Yeah. yeah. Well, look at the pole. The pole's coming out. The pole's coming out. I think we haven't used the poles in I don't know how long. When was the last time we used the poles, Brian? Ooh, it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a really long time, so it's pretty exciting. I think we ran all the lines right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> we haven't done it in so long, we didn't think we were gonna do it right. Sweet, I'm excited. Good, huh? Wing, wing on, wing on, wing. They're cruising, bro. They're looking good. Has anyone asked you on camera yet how you found Delos? Well, the story is uh, I was at my dad's lake house where he sails on his lake. Just woke up one morning, started browsing YouTube, and saw this thumbnail of all these hot girls in bikinis. It was a sailing video, so I clicked it and started watching and it was kind of like somewhere between 60 or 80th episode of Delos and I watched it all. I was like, damn, I should start this from finish or from beginning. So I did and I loved every minute of it. So it was two years ago that I discovered Delos. Okay. And uh, immediately wanted to buy you guys a beer. And now here you are. And now I had a good feeling too about it. So now here I am, yeah. Did you? Yeah, I really did have a good feeling about it. Like I honestly felt something like if I did this, it would, it would happen. I feel like every patron that's come forward since I've been here says that same thing. Mm -hmm. Like I, I knew it was going to be, I knew, I just had a feeling. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Interesting. Oh yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Do me entry. When was the last time we were in Anchorage with this bad of rolls? Uh, St. Helena. Yeah, Ascension. So we are in Montserrat. I don't know anything. I think there's a place that the volcano erupted and came over and, and covered like a bunch of buildings and stuff. So I think there's an area that you can walk up to and kind of there's a building and some palm trees and stuff that are all buried and you're standing like level at the top of the palm tree. So that'll be pretty cool. And I know literally nothing else about this island. Arrivals, that's us. disorganized but they're cool. I went ahead and cleared us in and out. Nice. And passport stamps are optional. So if you guys want a passport stamp we can get one otherwise we don't need one. But we're cleared out until the 13th. I don't know where we'd get one. We'd have to track down immigration. So <laughs> uh. <laughs> anyway we're free to explore if you guys want to. Yeah. Nice. Uh, or we can there's no hurry to move the boat around. I think we should move it over here though. It's pretty rolly. So we decided to try to move Anchorage over to the city side. Because this is kind of Dallas right now. The other day, when I drilled the thing free of the toilet, 
nasty stuff. Whatever I drilled free ended up in the holding tank and then at the bottom of the holding tank it funnels down and it got caught in that little spot and the tank is full so every time we flush it it overflows onto the deck. So I just, <coughs> I just took the, this thing and jammed it up there a bunch of times and it was a lot. Did it come out? Yeah. You cleared it? Yeah. Oh my god. I was upset that I didn't film it when it was happening but I'm really glad because that shouldn't be on film. Did you throw us? Yeah, a little bit, not, <coughs> not a lot. Do you want an egg? No, I don't want a friggin' egg. <laughs> the last thing I want right now is to eat an egg. <coughs> oh, God. Are you ready for an adventure today? I believe I am. I got my backpack full of goodies and sunglasses and my hat. Sweet, you're adventure so, ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Do you have any idea what we're doing today? Uh, I believe we're gonna go try to find this volcano that's hiding somewhere on this island. This crazy explosion that happened was in 1995, and at the time 20,000 people lived on the island, and then two-thirds of the population left. Uh, I also know that there was 20 feet of ash that buried the buildings that we're gonna go see today, so that's pretty wild. There's a lot of Irish history, kind of descendants on this island. I think that's all I know. Also, if you live here, you're known as a Montserratian, which I thought was cool. <laughs> so, I'm sure we're gonna learn a lot more today. Yep. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Welcome to Montserrat. Yeah, pleased to meet you guys. Thanks for answering my email to take yeah, us on no the problem. tour. No problem. Nice to meet you. All right. We're excited. We're ready to see your beautiful cool. island. Cool. Joe's a born and bred Montserratian and knows the island like the back of his hand. He even helped us with the permit to visit the off-limits volcano exclusion zone. Our first stop, the Volcano Observatory. Yeah, better than carrying it around. So this is the Montserrat Volcano Observatory, and I think we're gonna go watch a short film on something. After lying dormant for 350 years, on July 18, 1995, the Sufrir Hills volcano of Montserrat roared to life. In a sudden eruption, ash began to spew from the long dormant volcano. The town of Plymouth, the capital of Montserrat, was evacuated with thousands of residents fleeing to safety in the north. An exclusion zone was put into effect for the entire south portion of the island. This exclusion zone ended up saving many lives when only two years later, in 1997, the expanding lava dome in the crater finally blew. Ash columns rose more than 10 miles into the air and the eruption was even visible from space. A gigantic portion of the volcano was blown off in a tremendous explosion that resulted in massive pyroclastic flows. The flow from this type of eruption moves at an average of 100 kilometers per hour and buries, burns, or destroys everything in its path, continuing until it finally hit the sea. They carried on hundreds of meters out to sea. It's cool to see a uh, 95 footage. Yeah. Yeah, what did they say? In 99, it exploded like 80 times over a few months. Imagine that. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, bye bye. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that it was like 2010 had a pretty bad eruption. That yeah. it was like that kind of not that long ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. And most of the eruptions have happened within the last 20 some odd years. It's crazy yeah. that the mountain is growing. Like this used to be the highest peak, but now because there's so much stuff coming up, it's just constantly getting taller and taller. So the thing grew a shipping container a second all around the dome. Just imagine like a balloon just getting blown up from all this pressure underneath it. And I can't imagine just a whole mountain top growing, 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 and then a third of it just get blown off the top all over the island. That's unbelievable. Just the immensity of Mother Earth in the form of a volcano. It's uh, unimaginable until you see it, so. Since then, the entire town of Plymouth has been a ghost town 
And in fact, the entire south portion of the island is still off limits. Before visiting Montserrat, we'd contacted the government and received special permission to enter the exclusion zone. Yeah, so this neighborhood we're walking in, it's a complete jungle now, but before this, in 97, when the first eruption started, the government said, you're gonna evacuate your houses for the weekend and you'll be back on Monday, and that Monday never came. And then in 2017, they came and they cleared a church that we were just at and um, had like a service and the 20 year kind of memorial of them leaving their home for their long weekend, as they call it. This whole area has been just pretty much abandoned and the jungle has taken over because all the volcanic ash that landed in this neighborhood has sprouted trees and grass and it's just so fertile. Getting a pretty special tour. This was his mom's neighborhood at one time, so he's literally driving around with us showing us each little house that's poking out and every little detail. And when I asked him why he decided to stay, his answer was basically this tour. Like he had been doing it for so long and it was really all he knew. So to leave this island, Montserrat, and leave that tour behind, he just felt like it was worth it to stay. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Joe Philip, um, in the Cockhill area, <clears throat> and I'm calling to ask permission to fly a drone. Not that much. I'm trying. Okay. What's the speed of 30 meters? Not very high, about 30 meters. Okay. All right. So I'll, call you you call you I'll call you back when I'm done. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Bye. That's cool you have the number to the control tower. I have everybody's number. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty crazy to drive through these villages and you see all the abandoned houses and how fast they have gotten like taken over by the jungle. Straight away, like within a few years, it's just completely buried. <laughs> And then it was time to drive to the base of the volcano to check out how the once capital city of Plymouth fared. So this is the top floor of four stories just buried underneath there. It's crazy to think that underneath our feet is like so much <laughs> that is just buried like houses and personal belongings and yeah, it's pretty nuts. What's it say? No. <laughs> some cool close-ups. Yeah, there's like the, that church over there that's just completely buried almost all the way up to the top. And there's just like church architecture poking up. Hi, bye, son. Up next on Delos, we show Martin and Crystal what it's like to do a night passage on the ocean. One, two, three. <laughs> what are you guys doing? We're being boomerangs. I'll show you what we're doing. Oh shit, this battery has no battery. It smells like farts. Did you use fart? No, that's the volcano. <laughs> I always catch you doing random stretches. Screen for the like, subscribe, add. Add.
Hey, if you ever want to go sailing, but really not want to leave your couch, turn on to SDDailyWorks.com.